In this video I describe the use of my new Tormac 8L lathe for the production of a small part for my AccuSlice system. I bought this system about a month ago and the past month I've been learning how to use it, learning how to use the software and how to get everything set up and get everything aligned. Uh, I originally, uh, about a year ago, I bought a Precision Matthews uh, lathe and a Precision Matthews mill. And I did convert the uh, Precision Matthews mill to CNC operation. The initial plan was to convert the lathe for CNC operation also, but based on the design of the system, it was a little more difficult to do. So I decided to buy this Tormac 8L lathe in its place. Now this is a small lathe, and it's good for doing small parts. It's what I do mostly, I'm making small parts such as this bearing uh, for the AccuSlice system. And this was my first project to make these standoff bearings for the AccuSlice system. That's a bearing that's about uh, three quarters of an inch in diameter, and it's a standoff for the, uh, the bearings on the uh, carriages on the AccuSlice system. But it's an ideal part to make on a small lathe like this. So I said I'm a novice at using this, and in setting it up and starting to, to learn that a few issues did come up. Uh, well, the first issue was the, uh, the tubing they used for the, uh, the fl uh, flood coolant, very stiff. Uh, it was hard to, it kept getting in the way and getting tangled up. So I replaced it with some Tigon tubing, which is much more flexible and much easier to move around. So that, that was my first issue, uh, getting that uh, changed over. The other issue that came up was uh, dripping from the coolant system. Uh, the coolant system was dripping on various places on the side pan and then dripping on the floor. And I ended up doing a lot of mopping up, cleaning up after it. And so I investigated how I could eliminate that. And I made a few changes to the coolant system to eliminate the, uh, the dripping and the overflow from the system. So now it works perfectly. There's no leaks in the system. One of the problems I had with the system was the coolant system was leaking. And what's happened was leaking all over down here, and then it was leaking down on the side and onto the floor. And so what I did is I made a mat to go inside my tray here, and this mat covers the edges, edge to edge, and just opens up in the middle. So all the drainage now goes through the middle, so there's no chance of it splattering on the edge and hitting on these outside rails. So that directs all the coolant flow to one direction in the center. And originally I, I, I did this by putting some, uh, some duct tape in there, which didn't hold it very well. So I ended up making this rubber mat, and this is actually epoxied in place, and it's totally sealed you know, on the bottom, so it's totally sealed. I also put a, a flap up here, again, to keep it from uh, dripping on this front edge and then coming out the front. So that's two chains that I made. Then inside, I made a change to, again, minimize the dripping of the system. And what I did is I, I made a tube that goes inside this well here, and it goes down, down here, so it doesn't splash when the, when the dripping goes down. It, it drips down real low and prevents it from splashing up on these rails. So these changes, you know, putting that, putting this liner inside my chip tray, putting this extension to lower the, uh, the dripping of the uh, coolant into the, uh, the tank. Uh, those two changes eliminated the, uh, the, uh, the dripping that I was getting that was causing the uh, flooding of, of the system with coolant getting all over the place. Because what was happening, like I said before, it was, it was dripping on these rails, and it was dripping down the side, and it was dripping down here and down here, and then going on the floor. I was doing that on both sides. So again, I'm directing all my flow to a, a small area with my chip tank, a small area here, and then directing the flow down real low. So those two changes eliminate all my problems and now it, uh, it works perfectly. There's no uh, going on the floor anymore. I do plan on making one major change on the system. Uh, this is an OXA tool post and it's pretty small and pretty light. And it worked fine for doing the, the, the uh, cutoff tool and the, uh, the turning tool. But when I was trying to drill, drill a hole through the center, I put this system on, which is a lot of weight hanging off the system. And I was getting a lot of wobble in it. It just wasn't stable enough. So I'm looking to change this tool post to an, an AXA system. And here's the, uh, the tool post I plan on mounting on there. And you can see it's it's probably three or four times the mass. 
So I had to make a new uh, base for it. So I'll be working on that. So that, that should be a major change. It should be a lot more stable because it's a lot bigger and heavier. But uh, that's the one change I'll be making in the future. One of the main changes from the videos and everything that I was watching uh, online is the direction of the, the tools. Now all my tools are coming from the front and according to a lot of those videos, you know, this distance should be a negative distance. Uh, but uh, with the software, it ends up being a positive distance. And so my tool here is three quarters of an inch away from my part and that's why my X dimension here is a positive three quarters. And of course my Z is set uh, as a zero because that's right against where I'm going to be uh, starting my cut. I'm using tool one as my work offset. I'm actually using two tools for this project. Tool one is my uh, face turning uh, tip and tool number four is my cutoff. So I'm only using two tools for this process. So the X and uh, Z are zero for the uh, my face turning tool which is my work offset and then my cutoff tool, I set my uh, parameters there. One of the hard things for me to get in my head is just the direction, you know. What they call Z direction, to me, it seems like it should be the X direction, you know. I'm a scientist by training, and it just doesn't seem logical. Anything going from left to right should be a Z direction. So I, I keep having to think uh, very carefully about doing that to make sure I get the orientation correct. That, you know, this direction is Z, and this direction is X. Seems like it should be should, like it should be X and Y, but uh, gotta get that keep squ that squared away in my head as I'm uh, machining parts. So I wrote the program to make this part in the conversational software on the Tormac system, and this is my drawing of the part. And it's about three quarters in diameter, quarter inch thick, and has multiple steps and a, a quarter inch hole through the center. At a quarter inch hole through the center, I drilled on a, the other lathe. So the, I, pro, I already have this program set up. So I go to a File, and my file is stored in this file here, Bearing Standoff. And I have four different versions, which I was playing with as I was trying to get this thing working. And my final version is this version right here. So I click on that, and now to edit it, I hit conversational edit over here on the right side of the screen. And you see I have three programs in here. A facing, a profile, and a cutoff. The facing and profile both use the same tool and then my second tool is my cutoff tool. Now to edit the software I, I just click on it and then hit uh, conversational edit and here's the program for the facing operation. <clears throat> so again my part is uh, three quarters diameter. I, I set this for 0.76. I'm cutting off ten thousandths initially as I'm facing off. And here's my speeds. You know, 300 uh, feet per minute. And a roughing cut of 5 thousandths inches per revolution. And a finishing step of 2,000 inches per revolution. The profile cut uses the same cutter. Both facing and profile use the same cutter. Again, a conversational edit. And here's the program. Starting off with, you know, my first step here is 0 0.370 inches diameter. And that goes in uh, 20 thousandths. Now it says 30 thousandths because I allowed for the 10 thousandths inch cutoff. So uh, 20 thousandths plus 10 would be my 30 thousandths. Then I go out to a half an inch, go over a total of 150,000. Uh, my drawing says 140, but again, I have to add 10 for the cutoff. My final outside diameter is 0.735 inches, and that goes over, you know, almost a quarter of an inch. And then finishes coming out. So that's the steps of the profile. And the final step is the cutoff, which I changed to uh, a different tool. This is using tool number four. Previous two steps used tool number one. And my uh, cutoff tool is 0 0.062 inches in diameter. And it steps over 0.233 inches. And the end is a step where if my, my spacer 
and my space is supposed to be 0 0.2, 0 0.220 inches you know, thickness. And sometimes it comes out to you know 0 0.221 or 0 0.219. And if I adjust that, I just go back into this program and adjust this by you know thousands of an inch to give me an exact dimension. So I've adjusted this a couple times. I guess I'm allowing for tool wear. And you finish it, you know, and then I would save it. It's already saved. I didn't make any changes. And I have my program. I can load my G code from here. And here's my software G code. And this is a, a screen showing the cutting as you're uh, turning the piece on the lathe. To start the process, I take a piece of a uh, 6061 aluminum bar. This is three quarter inch in diameter, and I put it in a chuck on my Precision Matthews PM 1130V lathe. And then I have a quarter inch diameter drill. This is a short drill, and I'll be drilling this quarter inch diameter hole about an inch and a half into the uh, piece of aluminum bar. Next I place my uh, three-quarter inch diameter aluminum bar, which has been pre-drilled with a quarter inch hole. I place it into um, a 5C collet uh, chuck on my 8L lathe, and then tighten it in place after I measured the correct length. And then do an adjustment on the uh, coolant nozzle to make sure it uh, applies the coolant in the correct position. This is the actual turning of the piece on the lathe. In the upper right hand corner is the computer animation of what's happening. Starting off with the facing operation, doing two roughing cuts, and then two finishing cuts. Finishing cuts are at a slower speed, lower depth, give you a nice smooth finish. And then, then start the profile. Profile on the various diameters. Going down the various steps. And this is a roughing cut at a, at a faster, heavier, cut. Probably could even be, you know, faster and heavier uh, in the future. But uh, The total time to uh, make this part is about three minutes. That's from start to finish. Loading the part and actually finishing the cutting and cutting off. So then we do two finish cuts. One uh, a, fi a finish roughing cut. And then a final uh, cut at a much slower s speed with only 2,000 inch uh, uh, removal of material. So much slower cut to give you a nice finish on the part. And the tool moves out of the way, away from the part, goes back to the starting position, in which I change to tool number four, the cutoff tool. And then we proceed to cut the part off in the next step. And there's the actual parting off of the piece on the lathe. And I said it only takes about three minutes uh, to make these parts. I probably could speed it up even faster by doing some faster cutoff speed, but I made a total of 100 of these uh, spacers for the Hacky Slice system. Here's just a few of the finished pieces that came off the 8L lathe uh, of these standoffs for the AccuSlice system. In total, I made about 100 of these standoffs for the AccuSlice system. Here's another shot of the uh, process of making these parts. I, I shot this without using any coolant. Uh, got a lot of stringy, so it's a little bit hard to see it, but uh, it worked pretty well even without coolant. The part did get warm. So I just finished the facing step, and now we're doing the profiling step. Now the finished parts actually came out very nice. Uh, see almost no tool marks on the surfaces. I got nice smooth finishes. Apparently uh, finishing it off with a, only a 2,000 uh, inch removal uh, material. Gave me some really nice finishes on the surfaces. So, it's, don't need polishes or cleaning up or anything. They, they came out perfect. Now, 
And this is the actual finishing step. You can see how slowly it's moving. Uh, I slowed the speed down. And it's only moving 2,000 of an inch of material. I then move the cutting tool back to the uh, G30 position, change to the tool number four, cut off tool, and I proceeded to cut off the piece. This concludes this video on the production of these aluminum standoffs for the AccuSlice system. And we uh, produced these on the new Tormac 8LA, which I just received in my shop. And I, I wrote the program to do this, and this is my, this is my first project with this system. And I'm quite happy with the results. Uh, the finishes are, are really nice. I got really nice smooth finishes on these parts, and they came out to be very accurate uh, in, my, uh, in the precision and tolerances. So, so far I made about 100 of these. I'll probably make another 100 in the next couple days. And these are used on the AccuSlice uh, carriages. And what they use on the uh, carriages, each, which consists of a plate, and which rides on roller bearings that rides on a rail. And these in this case consists of uh, five of these roller bearings. And between the roller bearing and the plate, I need a standoff. And that's where these parts are used. They're a part that goes between the roller bearing and the plate and just enables the uh, roller bearing to turn smoothly on the plate and then this rides on the rail on my AccuSlice system. So I'll be selling, selling quite a few of those in the next few days because I, I was out of stock and now I can uh, make some more of the carriages. One of the next projects I'll be working on is a new tool post for the Tormac lathe. I felt that the, uh, the current tool post, which is an OXA, uh, was a little too small, too light. And uh, when I was trying to attach a, a lathe, or excuse me, a, a turning chuck on there, I thought I saw too much vibration in it just because there was too much of a hang off on that small tool post. So this tool post is about three or four times the mass. This is a, an AXA tool post. And I need to make a, a base plate for it, which I'll be making on my mill. And uh, this should uh, improve the performance of the system also. And also I've heard people complain about the, uh, the set, the, uh, the tool post on the 8X, you know, the 8L lathe uh, tends to move with time. So I'm looking to make a more robust uh, system to keep it more aligned so it doesn't twist in the future. So that'll be a future project coming up and I will be doing a video on that. One of my next projects for the AccuSlice system will be making these bearings. This is a, a brass bearing that goes in the uh, indexer on the AccuSlice system and enables the indexer to move in and out. Uh, this is, as I said, is a brass piece. It's about an inch and a half long, but uh, about five-eighths of an inch in diameter. It actually requires two steps on the lathe, and pro or two uh, setups on the lathe, I should say, and another setup on the mill. So it'll be a little more complicated piece. It has a left-hand thread insert. Uh, so that'll be a, a challenging piece to make, but I'm sure I can make this on the uh, 8L lathe. So it'll be a nice project uh, for the future. So that concludes this video. I will be making some additional videos on this uh, Tormac 8L lathe. Uh, so, you know, stay tuned for those videos. And once again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, as always, please give us a call or drop us an email. We're always happy to hear from you.